taking a look at a lot of our disqualified opportunities, we'll listen to those call recordings, right? And, and right. maybe it's a coaching moment, um, whether it's, it's tactical sales, maybe it's, it's just the wrong prospect, like whatever the case may be. So I, I think it's always good to look at things from a lot of different lenses and, and just have that like real honest conversation. I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter who's right, what metric is. It's, it's about finding out what it is and, and fixing it or, or, or leaning into it more to, to really run with it. So. Gee, y'all new to the game. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Morgan J. Ingram here, host of the SDR Chronicles, bringing you motivational advice, tactics, and tips for your SDR journey, your sales journey, not your entrepreneurial journey, as I believe that sales development is a mantra and vocal point for your career, but not only for your career, because for your life, uh, because we use sales development and sales every single day. So today I have a special guest, Kevin, VP of Sales at Global Windex, and we're going to be diving into a topic that I'm really excited about, which is the critical metrics that have a real impact. And so... Mm-hmm. We've never talked about the, the metrics that are actually going to help you along the way. We've talked about them before, but not in detail. So super excited about this topic. So Kevin, do a little bit more uh, introduction to yourself. What, what, what is about you uh, that you're excited about this topic today? Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, like you mentioned, I'm the VP of sales over here at Global Web Index. Um, we've been building out a sales development team um, here in North America. Uh, we have a team over in London as well. Um, you know, a lot of my career I've been a part of involved in, you know, building these teams, managing these teams, running these teams. Um, and sort of, as you, you kind of mentioned, I think it's such an exciting role, uh, especially to just, uh, start off your sales career. I think you learn so much. I think it really can be a, an amazing launch pad for, for a successful sales career. So, um, yeah, I mean, just in terms of training, developing, coaching, and really figuring out what is going to make this absolutely take off and fly is something that I'm doing every single day. I'm passionate about, I'm excited about. So uh, when you and I kind of originally hooked up and started talking about this, I thought it was a great, uh, great topic. So super pumped. Yeah, for sure. And let's, let's go into that. The first question people are wondering is why are we measuring metrics that do not create critical impact? Like why every metric is a critical one, right? So let's kind of dive into that. Yeah, I I think first and foremost, um, you know, when you take a look at the critical metrics, I think the reason we're not tracking them is first and foremost, it's hard, right? It either is going to take an investment uh, from having a really killer sales ops person, uh, work their magic, play around with data and be able to, you know, take a look at sales development activities, metrics, KPIs, and, and tie that to actual critical impacts and, and business results. Uh, or it's gonna take a, a piece of software, right? Um, Mm -hmm. and depending on your organization, right. If you're in the startup world and you're super scrappy, you may not have that level of of budget. So I think first and foremost, it's, it's kind of difficult to get, uh, a lot of the clear visibility to, to what's happening, what's driving results. Uh, and if it's not going to be financial commitment, it's going to be time. And as you know, sales leadership, uh, sales executives, SDRs, uh, our time is most critically spent being in front of our customers and you tend to fall back to those, those traditional ways of doing things. And it's a lot of activity. Like it all starts with activity for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's super easy to just look at those vanity metrics, look at those top line metrics that uh, are easy to track or easy to, to monitor uh, and really push those. So I think it's, I think really it's, it's, it's hard, um, but that shouldn't stop us because it is, it is critical for us to understand really what's happening, what's driving the most impact. Yeah, a hundred percent. And so, you know, within that, like, there's tons of activities, like you said, you can go back to the old mold or you can kind of just go through the motions. What specific activities should you be focused on and then and what duration should you be doing those activities? So for example, like should I be focused on looking at my pipeline for two hours or just one hour? Or should I be doing more one-on-ones with my reps or doing more team collaborative exercises? Like kind of dive into that. Yeah, for sure. So I think, you know, first and foremost, uh, from my my perspective, you know, I'm really looking at a lot of these metrics, uh, definitely on a weekly basis. Uh, I think when I take a look at, you know, sales development management, you know, they're probably a little bit more hands-on and they're probably looking at this uh, more on a daily metric for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, I think the, one of the keys to this is really being able to take a look at these metrics, not just over time, but how they're, how they're evolving and changing. So being able to look at, 
not just a daily or a weekly count, but looking at monthly, looking at month over month, quarter over quarter, and really being able to see uh, how all the work that you're doing, all the new strategies, ideas, the different things that you're implementing, the partnerships with marketing, how's it actually driving your results and seeing how that's converting um, over time. So I think it does vary, but I do believe that within sales development specifically, um, you really have to have a good grasp and handle on these metrics. Mm -hmm. I think the, the exciting thing from, you know, from my perspective is that you can make really quick, decisive changes that can drive big impact. So uh, again, if you're within a month to month sort of, you know, uh, schedule in terms of quota targets and things of that nature, mm -hmm. you wait a couple of days that turns into a week. Now all of a sudden 25% of your month is gone right? The nice thing I think with sales development is you can make changes on a day to day that'll actually drive impact, which accumulating over time, right, can, can actually be a game changer for your month. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, th and that's super critical. And it, and it goes into like the next facet of that, which is what is the most important thing when first looking at the metrics to see if they do create real impact, right? So we have a lay of the land of like, these are things that you're looking at. They're obviously as an executive, there's different things you got to make sure that there's there, but you know, to answer that question, like, what are your thoughts there? Yeah. So I think, you know, there's, there's different sort of levels to it or different buckets mm -hmm. of, of what you're looking at. You know, I think first and foremost, um, from my perspective, I do like to look on a monthly or even a quarterly basis uh, and really take a look at, all right, here's the deals that we won over the last 30 days or the last 90 days, uh, and really try and tie that back to specific metrics that are SD related, right? So speed to lead is always a big one for me. Mm -hmm. um, whenever I do this analysis, and, and it's a nice reinforcement for me at this point, um, but whenever I'm, I'm writing this analysis, I am able to see that it's usually somewhere between 80 to 85% of the deals that we closed. Mm -hmm. I can see that those leads were followed up time and time again, but it's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty strong, right, um, right? Correlation to, Hey, if you get to these leads quick, there's going to be a higher probability of, of converting, not just to a demo, a qualified op, but only to the end result, which is what we're all here for is, is, is driving, you know, new business. Um, so I think that's a big one. Um, I also think taking a look at, you know, number of touches per lead is, is also a, a very, very strong one as it's tied to both your closed one business um, as well as your pipeline at risk. So I usually do a lot of analysis on pipeline that's open for a certain period of time, right? For me, it's typically 90 days based off our sales cycle. But, you know, you can see like maybe the, you know, the life cycle of that lead, it just hasn't been touched nearly enough, right? Um, or maybe it's too spread out. So you can really start to try and draw some, some parallels or some assumptions based off of, how the deals are actually progressing. Um, you have to take all that, of course, with a grain of salt, I think, because you know, there, there is accountability. There's an element of you have your rock star AEs, they're gonna convert deals, you know, mm. they're gonna win them quicker and things of that nature. But when you look at it um, over a longer period of time, you know, a lot of opportunities, you can really start to kind of draw some, some comparisons and correlations. Um, you know, that's, that's for things that I look at, right? I know my, my revenue model, and so I'm always trying to figure out what are the things that are going to actually impact our conversions throughout our funnel? So that's a big one for me. Um, I also think though, too, there are other metrics that are not necessarily vanity metrics that really do drive right. critical business performance, but I think also have a larger impact within sales development. We, we know sales development, it's, it's a grind. It's a tough job. Mm -hmm. um, you know, making the amount of calls, <laughs> the amount of rejection, right? It, it is tough. Um, it can be super rewarding, but I think it's really great if that you can touch and you can really drive in some of the small wins, right? Um, one of the things I like to look at is call sentiment or call disposition, right? How, how good was the call? Was it a good mm -hmm. positive call? Did we make progress on this lead? Or did we not get great feedback? And we can take a look at the number of connected conversations they have relative to their call sentiment. And, and I think for that, yes, the, the number of calls and conversations, um, but the quality of those conversations is super important. But those are some nice little wins along the way that you can really celebrate and you can really, um, really enjoy uh, yeah. to kind of keep you on your, on your grind. Yeah. I think you brought up a lot of great points there and we have so many tools out there that allow you to do a lot of stuff that you're saying uh, to make sure that you are effective. So within that, there's two things that I noticed what you said and I thought they were really interesting to dive more into. So speed, you said speed to lead. So how do you make sure that the reps are actually getting there fast because they could be doing something else, right? So how do you make sure that they're being prompt on that? And then also the call, that's position, the sentiment. 
How are you deciding on which calls that rep should have? And then also, how are you encouraging reps to come to you to make sure that you can give them good feedback? Because I know like me, I, I don't like, I don't like people listening to like what I have to say, but yeah. at the same time, I know it's helpful. So I'm curious to see how you're leading that direction. So people come to you for that. Yeah. So, so those are all really good questions. So I think first, you know, to, to the, the speed to lead, um, you know, there's definitely a lot of little, you know, quick scrappy ways you can input alerts uh, to make sure that every single SDR gets an alert when an MQL is put into their name. So a proper lead routing and lead management system is, is definitely key there. You can't just throw them into a, into a bucket or a queue and, and hope people are going to go grab them because mm -hmm. that, that doesn't work. Um, but at the same time, um, one of the things I found super effective is just having those daily standups, having the conversation with them and, and being able to say, hey, listen, here's MQLs in your name that you just haven't acted on yet, right? Um, there's a lot of other really cool systems and softwares out there that can proactively give you those alerts and they can, you know, um, whether it's through email, whether it's through message, Slack, whatever the case is. So there's a lot of really cool tools out there, but there's also some kind of quick scrappy ways you can do that. Of course. Um, in terms of the kind of like the coaching moments, I think is what you're, what you're talking about in terms of, um, you know, how do you define what's a good call? What's a bad call, the calls they should be having. And then ultimately letting me into their, their world on, on that. Um, you know, one of the things I've found is that when you, when you're really starting to develop, whether it's call sentiment, your opportunity qualification criteria, all that stuff, it's, it's super important to have it as clear and documented. So that way, when you're talking about what's a good, a call with good sentiment yeah. or bad one, you can refer to either specific things that are being said, certain, you know, questions that were answered. They can check specific boxes within that call to be able to say, yes, this was a good call or no, it wasn't. Mm. Um, you know, I think that's, that's really, really important to just give clear direction on that front. You know, I've had, and again, you, you kind of get a difference with, with the, with different SDRs, but right. for me, I've had a lot of SDRs who send me calls every single week, right? Um, because I'm able to have that sort of coaching opportunity with them and they know that I'm not here to just absolutely rip their calls apart and slam them for it. Yeah. I'm here to coach them and guide them and, and make them better. And, um, you know, it's, it's about, but at the end of the day, right. Just like anybody, if I'm, if I start coaching you and give you tidbits and, and a little piece of advice and you actually start to implement it and you see it works, right. You're going to keep on wanting to go back to that person for more advice and, and ways to get better. So I think just being able to, to be really genuine and, and, uh, very approachable, um, has, has served me well with being able to get SDRs to bring me into their world invite me on calls, send me call recordings, uh, and really be able to work with them um, on that level when some are like, don't want, I don't want to hear my voice. I don't want to listen to call recordings. Like, I think it's like, it's like watching film. Like let's throw the game tape up there. Yeah. Let's dissect it and let's get better. You, you have, yeah, I think you have to be able to do that. And I treat sales as a sport, right? So like all yeah. everyone is in sports is watching game film. And I was actually having a conversation with someone the other day and they were like, yeah, so I prepare maybe three hours before an hour meeting. I'm preparing, preparing two hours before a 30 minute meeting. And it's, you're going to do in anything, you're going to do more preparation than the actual event itself. And so yep. that's an important metric to track. And, you know, we went grandly with those metrics, but let's kind of take it in a broad view. Like what are the metrics that you're looking at universally um, that to see, okay, what's actually creating real impact and like what's not. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a good question. I think for, for me right now, um, we've made some, some general assumptions, right. Mm -hmm. Within, within how we want our, our funnel to convert. Um, so that way we can align very close with marketing. So we're taking a look at, you know, our MQL to qualified op conversion, right? We, we have some, some benchmarks and some assumptions that we, where we want that metric to be. Um, we've, and again, even part of where, where we've been, it's, we've made a lot of progress and, and have done a lot of work just to get the visibility to these numbers and these metrics. So we, you know, we can track and monitor them. So now, you know, I'm benchmarking specific conversions on a month to month basis to see, Hey, is that, is that what we, we can assume? Right. Yeah. Um, so like I said, MQL, the qualified opportunity is, is a big one. Um, like I said, speed to lead is, is another one touches per lead is another key one for us as well. Um, and then we're, you know, again, we're taking a look at, uh, on the conversation level as well. So, how many conversations are leading to a demo? How many demos are converting to a qualified opportunity? Um, literally, I mean, every single step of the way throughout our funnel, we have an assumptive conversion metric that we're 
we believe either a we should hit or we we can hit um and so part of it is right part of it is like we don't know exactly what it could or what it should be right now but we right. need to make an assumption and we got to start somewhere and we got to start tracking and measuring it and then uh at that point what gets me excited about that is that now when i'm taking a look at our funnel i can start to really pinpoint aspects of our entire end-to-end -end sales process where do we need to optimize what do we need to fix right, right. and so um, when I take a look at the top of the funnel and I'm seeing from marketing through sales development, we're converting at a super high level. Um, but maybe our close, our, our close one percentage isn't right. I, I know exactly where I need to kind of dive into and where, what, you know, where I need to kind of pop the hood and, and, and figure these things out. So exactly. we're fixing what's really, truly broken versus like, Hey, SDRs, go make some more phone calls or AEs, you got to just go close those deals. Like that, yeah. <laughs> no one like that, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like that because that's where I think a, a lot of people do go wrong, right? It's because like, yes, you do need to go make more calls and you got to close more deals, but like how, like, how are you going to do that? It's like, it's like being sick and someone's like, Oh, get better. It's like, I don't know how to get better. That's why I got to yeah. go to the doctor. I got to get diagnosed. <laughs> right. Like, otherwise I'm just going to be sitting here. So I think the same thing applies to what exactly what you said is, Hey, we could tell people to go do more but why would we go do more of something when we don't know the actual real problem? So that's where like, you got to figure out what that metric comes into play. And so yeah. I think this kind of goes to kind of the next question is, does the metrics change based on the quarter or the type of season that you're in? Right. Cause I know some people change different metrics on what they look at based on where they're at or how well the team is doing. So curious to see kind of what the feedback is there, um, especially from an organizational wise standpoint as well. Yeah. I mean, I think the metrics, for me, at least, I, I don't think the metrics necessarily change based off of like Q1 versus Q2 or seasonality, right. things of that nature. Um, our targets and goals definitely change because we do understand that, you know, for us, Q4 is going to be big. big. We're going to have a strong Q1 seasonality wise, but we'll adjust targets in Q2 and Q3 to account for a slower season. But mm -hmm. when it comes to conversions, when it comes to metrics, um, they are still universal, right? Um, so we do make some adjustments from the, the end result, but when it comes to metrics conversions, we definitely keep that consistent. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's nice for us to be able to, to keep that consistency because once you start changing things and too often and too quickly, it's really tough for you to then go back and say like, all right, here's where we went wrong or here we went, we went right, you know? So uh, I personally, I do like the consistency um, but there's, of course, I mean, you, you have to be able to be agile and make changes as you see fit. Um, but that's, I guess, more specific depending on your business and, and what industry you're in, what you're selling, who you're selling to things of that nature. Yeah, a hundred percent. And this is something that uh, probably a lot of leaders may be listening or people that want to get into leadership. I think this is a question for everybody is obviously you're obviously reporting to maybe CEO, the board is in there as well when you are saying, Hey, these are the metrics that are creating real impact and they think it's another metric. How do you have a conversation with them? They'd be like, this is what we really do need to pay attention to. Yeah. I mean, that's always tough, right? Um, right yeah. You, know, <laughs> you guys are wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's the best approach I found. Um, <laughs> no, you know what? I mean, honestly, I think it, it really is a discussion. Um, and I think one of the, and what I have found, right. Is that, when it comes to growing revenue, executing against the revenue model, when it comes to building out these teams, there's no silver bullet, right? Um, there's not just one thing you're going to do that all of a sudden it's like, Hey, we changed our qualification and like, look at us now, like 10 X growth, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's going to be a combination of a lot of small things. Right. And so when, when we're having conversations about the, the metrics, the KPIs and, and the true impact that they're having, I think you have to go in with the understanding that there, it is going to be a lot of different things, right? It's not going to always be just one thing. Right. Um, and, and ultimately being collaborative and being able to say, okay, you know, cause sometimes like when, and I, I mean, I found, I find myself doing this as well, where when I'm, when I'm looking at numbers, I'm looking at data, you know, you kind of, not that you're trying to see what you're looking for already, but right. you know, being able to look at something from a complete different lens, uh, or from a completely different opinion, sometimes can be really eye-opening, right? So, um, you know, I think that it's always good to have somebody that's going to throw either a disagree with you, throw a different idea at you, look at it from a different way, 
Um, you know, one of the things that we learn a lot from is even, you know, we, we even look at it on the inverse, right? Where we're also looking at a lot of the things that are winning us business. We're taking a look at a lot of our disqualified opportunities. We'll listen to those call recordings, right? And, and right. maybe it's a coaching moment, um, whether it's, it's tactical sales, maybe it's, it's just the wrong prospect, like whatever the case may be. So I, I think it's always good to look at things from a lot of different lenses and, and just have that like real honest conversation. I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter who's right, what metric is. It's, it's about finding out what it is and, and fixing it or, or, or leaning into it more to, to really run with it. So, uh, yeah, it's always good to have that conversation for sure. Yeah, no, that's great. I think we, we covered a lot of great stuff here, Kevin. I really do appreciate you coming on the show. And one one last question I would ask everyone who comes on the show is, what's your number one piece of advice for SDRs, entry-level sales professionals, as they enter into their new role? Yeah. Wow. That's a good question. Um, you know, I, I think the, the most important thing, and I think one of the, the piece of advice I give a lot of the SDRs that we're hiring here, it's like, you gotta be fearless, right? The, the SDRs that I see that are ramping up, learning the most, um, they're just, they're getting on the phone, they're doing things right. Like they don't have it all figured out. And especially if you're coming in from entry level or not a ton of experience on, from a sales perspective, you know, you, you have to be able to, be okay with rejection. You have to be okay with failure. You have to be okay with making mistakes. More importantly though, you have to make sure you know you have the supporting around you that's gonna enable mm -hmm. that environment as well, right? So whenever I'm hiring new, any new sales role, I'm always saying to them, like your first month, your first two, three months, really, I'd rather, I just wanna see you make mistakes. Like I wanna see you learning from those mistakes. Like that, I know it's difficult and it's challenging to get, mm -hmm you know, get on the phone in front of everybody and get shut down and rejected. Like that's a tough thing to do every day, every day. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and it's like, sometimes you just got to call, like call your mom and say, I love you. You can feel better about things <laughs> yeah. and then just keep, keep going. Right. But yeah. if, if you're just fearless and you're not afraid to make mistakes, you're not afraid of hearing rejection, you, you're going to get through that minutia of learning and that ramp up period much, much faster. And you're gonna be better for it. You're gonna come out feeling bulletproof and, uh, yeah, so that's it's it's a it's a lot easier said than done for sure. But um, that'd probably be my my number one piece of advice. Awesome, I love it. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for being a guest on this. Our Chronicles, as I always say, guys, keep dialing, and I'll see you all soon. Awesome, thank you.